Welcome guys to the part 3 and in this part we are gonna render out the sand and the water thing that we have created. So we have already cached out our simulation and this is what we have got. So you can see like you know, uh, the color transfer is taking place and if you have a look, so initially both of them they have different colors so the water is uh, you know given a black color the sand is given kind of the white color and when they get close together the water will start to transfer the color from itself to the sand and we are going to use this data to like uh, blend between the wet and the dry shader okay so you can see like the more uh, forward we go the more black color thing that we see it's because you know the sand is getting more and more wet all right so this is the cache and if we go out you can see I've just set up a very uh, simple scene because I didn't want to waste any time. So this is just the tube, the collision object which I have brought from here. And this is a simple grid acting as a floor. And then we have the environment light over here. And I'm using the light known as Air Museum Playground. It's from the Polyhaven or the HDRI Haven if you know that. And the transform that I've used is, you know, uh, 60 and you know the position for the camera is this anyways like if you want to have exactly same kind of setup you can do that okay all right so i'll just render it out and let's see the how the scene is looking right now okay so this is what we have here let's start to build up the scene now so i'll just go here and get the cache here let's do a control c and I'll just make a new folder over here and let's call it sand let's go inside this I'll use an object merge to bring in the data and first of all you want to blast out the water so this is just the sand so I'll just use a blast node here and I'm going to blast out the water okay. so now we'll only be left with the sand and if you have a look you will see you know this one will look more kind of chunky so that is you know you can uh, you'll be able to know the difference between the sand and the water uh, like obviously if you just do a delete non-selected this will be water so if you don't get confused just see that you know if you if you're getting more chunky kind of thing that is the sand and if you have a kind of a smooth liquid that is supposed to be the water all right so this is the sand here and what I'm gonna do now I'll just make a copy of this whole thing I'll call it water okay I go over here and I'll do a delete non-selected so we'll be left with the water now so this was the sand and this is the water now for the water uh, so the sand is more of the you know like granular kind of uh, they have granular kind of structure but when we talk about water uh, you know it's more of a mesh uh, kind of combined kind of mesh okay it's a single kind of substance not like you know lots of points like sands so you just use a particle fluid surface just like we do in the flip simulation to make this look as a mesh itself so the first thing is like connect your resolution here i know uh, the original resolution that at which i sent was 0 0.01 so i'll use that in the influence scale maybe i'll put it to like something like 2 and in the drop it scale i'll put it to like 0 0.8 so basically influence scale means how far will the particles be connected so the lower these values are, the more details you will get, but you'll have to make sure you have enough points in your simulation in order to achieve that detail. So let's connect this one and let's see what we get. All right, so we have got the water look over here. Let's go back and I'll just copy this null, control C. And I'll just make a copy of this folder again. And this time I'll call it water maybe color. So we want to, you know, like make the water look more like dirtyish kind of water so we'll be doing that over here so let's just go here and just remove all of this thing and i'm just going to reference my original particle fluid surface output over here okay so it says the mesh and you know we are just referencing that mesh. so first of all we create the mesh of the liquid using the particle fluid surface and then we are just you know referencing that mesh over here so we are not doing the process twice. It's just like we are doing the process once and then we are just calling it out. You can cache out the mesh if you want, but you know, like I don't really think it's necessary in this case. So we have the sand, then we have the water 
and we have the water color okay so we'll start to set up everything so let's start with the sand here so i'll go to the material palette okay so let's go to the material palette so i already have a material for the ground and now i'm just going to get a new principal shader here and this is going to be the dry sand okay so this is before the sand gets wet let's call it dry sand okay and some of the properties that we want here is you know initially obviously we want the color always make sure it's like kind of desaturated and you can just do a control c and just put it on the sand here okay and you can see the color that we are getting in the viewport always make sure your use point color is unchecked otherwise you know uh, on top of this color the color that you have originally in your simulation it will start to get multiplied with this one and we don't really want that now for the dry sand obviously the roughness is going to be little bit higher and the reflectivity is going to be little lower okay then what we're going to do we're going to make a duplicate of this thing and this time we're going to call it wet sand so for the wet sand obviously when something gets wet and sand is the only thing that i can get wet uh, okay so you know it should be like a little bit darker first of all and the roughness should be less and the reflectivity should be higher don't make it too high or too low it will start to show up some firefly kind of uh, issues in the render but yeah, i think that is it and let's check each of them so let's put the dry sand first of all over here and let's look at the render view what do we have here okay so that is what we have in the dry state of the sand maybe uh i think you know like maybe i can get the color a little bit more bright i guess yeah that looks better and if i go to the mandra settings uh these are the settings that i'm using so instead of the noise level which is set to 0.01 i put i've put it to like 0.1 that's it okay now let's look at the wet sand so i'll just apply the wet sand material here and let's see what do we get so that is the wet sand and i think that looks good that should work all right now what we want to do is we want to mix between both of these shaders okay and the thing is uh you know we are going to use a layer mix shader and uh, we are going to use the cd attribute you know like the original thing that we simulated the cd attribute which was getting transferred from the water to the sand and now what we'll say wherever that uh, water so you know we want to like wherever the water has the interaction with the sand that area is going to get wet and everything else is going to be the dry area okay so that uh, information is being carried out uh, with the color data so just type mix over here and you'll get this layer mix okay put the layer a and put the layer b here and there's just no way which one is the right one so we we'll just have to render it out and check the order okay and in the alpha we'll be using a bind export and here just change it to the vector 3 okay just make sure you do this otherwise it won't work and just call it cd capital c and small d that stands for color diffuse so it knows you know it needs to look at the cd data which is present on the points and based on that it's going to create a mask let's go to the render view make sure you put the layer mix on this material and let's see what do we get now okay and you can see we have some areas which are you know kind of looking dark and some areas which are kind of looking light actually it should be opposite because we have water everywhere and you know it's just very few areas where we don't have the water so all that you need to do is you know just get the order right the b1 goes into the a and the a1 goes into the b and let's have a look again and that is what we have so you can see wherever the sand is in contact with the water it's getting wet and wherever it's not it's kind of dry okay so what we can do now is just to see if this is really working we can go to some previous frame like you know frame 24 or some let's start with 10 maybe let's see what do we get so this is what we have on the frame 10 
and you can see the sand is like you know completely dried out here okay let's go to the frame maybe 15 or so and now you can see the water it's falling on the sand which is making it you know wet so let's go to the frame 22 now and that is what we have so let's go to some more interesting frame like frame 35 or so okay so here you can see the state between the dry and the wet sand and just for the uh, sake of clarity i think you know i can definitely make the wet sand a little bit more darker here okay and that is what we have so i think that looks that looks kind of good maybe you know like maybe it's little bit too much so i'll just increase it a tad okay so that is what we have all right now let's start to work with the water material so i'm not going to use the basic liquid shader for the water because you know it's not really good for small scale stuff it just shows too much of reflection on the sides and this you know i just couldn't figure out why exactly is it so so you know it's better to create our own custom shader by using a material builder so let's just get a material builder over here vex material builder and we'll call it liquid let's go inside this and let's add a classic shader core so this is exactly what principal shader is made up of but you know with just some better outputs okay and you just cannot connect it like this so you just have to use the compute lighting and then you'll have to connect all these inputs and the outputs and believe me i have no idea what they are if anybody knows what this is they are just lying nobody knows what what these are <laughs> okay so just make sure you know like you like there are four inputs here four inputs here you know so actually this is just the inputs of the shaders which needs to be connected in order for the shader to work okay so these four they are simple but this one you know this one does not go to the normal it goes to the frame okay so that is it now let's go to the classic shader core and we don't want any diffuse stuff in the reflection just make sure the roughness is set to zero and in the refraction just turn it on that is it we can change the reflection model to like uh you know not the reflection refraction i think the reflection one to the fong which works little bit faster and it has like less noise but i don't really think you know it's needed for this one okay so let's get the liquid here let's copy it let's turn on turn on the water and let's paste it over here so let's have a look what do we get now so you can see we have started to see some of the water but you know it's not really that much and one reason uh the reason why this is happening is you know like when we used these two objects here the water object was you know like kind of small so if you see here i scaled down the water one because i wanted to show the mixing little bit more properly i wanted to have more chunks now if you want the uh, water to be like more visible you can use more water in this case okay you can scale up the object that's it so the thing is uh, the thing is in reality when the sand gets mixed with the water it's not just the sand which is changing the property so the sand will start to clump more it will start to become wet but at the same time the water is also changing its property right the water is getting more viscous now and the water is also getting more muddy so if you want to create a you know like kind of a fake thing uh, kind of interaction between both of them we need to use some kind of color in the water because you know right now it just looks like very plain kind of water you know there's just nothing to it okay so what we're going to do we we'll just go back to the material palette and we'll use a uniform volume material here so we have this uniform volume material let's get it and we'll change the color make it like kind of brownish okay and we will be putting the cloud density to something like 25 because the water is very very less over here so unless we really bump up the number here it won't really show its original color 
All right, so let's look at the render view now and let's see what we get. And you can see that is what we have now. So the water is looking more muddy because we gave it some color, right? So if you obviously, if you mix the water uh, with like some sand or something, you will always see, you know, like the water getting more muddy and, you know, showing more of that brown color. So that is what we get. So if we render some previous frame, so you can see the water in the action, the water, it falls on the sand and you know, it has the color and stuff, the sand, it starts to get wet. Let's look at some other frame. So this is how it looks on the frame 38. And that is how it looks on a later frame on frame 72. I think that looks really good. So only thing which I feel is, you know, the water could be a little bit more and one more thing is, you know, I, I'll just go back to the output here. And we have this volume limit option over here. So if the volume limit is set to zero, that means the light is not going to scatter inside your volume. So you can put this value to something like 10. You don't have to go above 8 or 10. So it will just make your volume, you know, like a little bit more lively. Okay. So it won't do much in this case because the particles are blocking all the lights. But, you know, in some places you will get really good kind of subsurface lightning going on there okay now uh one more thing the final thing is you know the noise level so i think i can easily go to like 0.02 or something and uh, let's see how it looks in the final render and this is what we have got for the final thing so i think that looks really good and that is it for the end of this part so we will have another tutorial coming up, which will show you how to, you know, make a beach scene with the sand and the water. And what's happening in this scene is, you know, it's not just about the sand and the water mixing the color exchange, the wetness, but also the clumpiness of sand, which gets formed when it gets mixed with the water. All right. So just wait for the next part, which will should be coming in a week or so. And yeah, that is it. So I hope you guys liked it. If you do, just make sure uh, you can subscribe and you can check our 15 days free demo class for the Houdini stuff. And yeah, that is it. Let's meet in the next part. Bye-bye. Take care.